These are what some of the industry people would say, and this is what I was running to. You need something for the radio. You need something this or that. It was always yeah. something that I didn't necessarily have. The One More Time Music Podcast. Genuine conversations with genuine people about music. Hosted by Henry with a three and Playback Ben. We're from Bimo Coops to Pins Halls. Don't want this to end, so part that one more time. Part that one more time. Part that shit like one more time. They part that one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode of the One More Time Podcast. I'm your host, Playback Ben, here with my co-host. Henry with the three, a.k.a. The Trap Jack Black. Henry, who do we have on the podcast today, my friend? Welcoming in on episode 48 of the One More Time Podcast, legendary recording artist and undisputedly the best artist from Funk Volume, it's Hobson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we couldn't get hot. Uh, yeah, they couldn't get hot, so they settled for first best. <laughs> who is this? Uh, <laughs> You know, some people call me fucking uh, uh, King. Uh, you know, uh, let me. I'm okay. Let me stop. I'm, I just like can. I'm not. It's cancel culture. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Got to check yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was gonna yeah, get. Yeah. It was gonna get all of us yeah, canceled. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. about to get canceled the we, first ten seconds of the episode. Yeah. In all seriousness, Looking this is legendary you. lyricist MC, your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, Jaron Benton. Your mama's favorite side nigga too. <laughs> Facts. Yep. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, so, you know, to dive right in, the bully. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like a self-proclaimed moniker of yours. Is that stemming from like, w were you a bully like growing up? Was that, was no, that you? No, I was, I was really the nigga that was, I would take up for the niggas that was getting bullied. That was me. Okay. Right. The bully came from a guy who labeled me a, a bully. So I just took the shit and just, I thought it was funny. Just ran with it. But, yeah, why, so, but why did he label you a bully? I'm going to break the story down. So- yeah. It was it was a guy. Um, he was a rapper. He was a, you know he, um, he was friends with Hobson at first, and then I don't know what happened. He just got disgruntled about some shit with Hobson, and he started dissing all of us. Mm. And um, I I never met the guy in my life. Didn't have shit to do. I was just getting strays, right? And so this guy, we had a show. I forget where we where, where the fuck were we at? We were either in like. Some fucking Midwest place, yeah. Of course, we had a show. <laughs> it's easy to forget. It's like Ohio, <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, it was. It was. It was. It was the funk volume tour. We had a show. We did a meet and greet, and usually before the meet and greets, me and Hopper would just get shit face. And it was a kid. Shout yeah, out DJ Hopper. DJ like, Hopper. Shout out to fucking Hopper. One time. One I ain't even gonna say a kid. I hate saying kids because he was a grown ass man. He was there with his girlfriend. He was buying us drinks. Mm. And they were cool. They were like, they came yeah. to meet us. And Sounds they like a cool. great guy. Yeah. He bought drink after drink. <laughs> yeah. like, this cool motherfucker, man. And so I noticed that Swizz was looking upset. And I was looking up Swizz. And I was like, yo, damn, Swizz just must be in a mood this morning and some shit. And so after the meet and greet, Swizz was like, I know that motherfucker. And mm -hmm. I was like, where you know him from? And he's like, bro, I'm telling you, that guy that was dissing us, he was under the post. Swizz had some type of fucking radar. So Swizz went to his Facebook, found this guy. Found the comment? Found the fucking comment, this guy. Jesus. And the guy was on the other guy who was dissing us. Um, he was on his shit, shit saying something like, yo, i am got tickets to their show. I'm going to go there and record myself. I don't know what his plan was, but apparently he's going to do something he fucked plotting. up. He was plotting. So I'm like, damn, I hope this nigga didn't do none of these drinks. Jesus. But, you know, he was bringing it because he did was Did you start feeling drinks. crazy like after that? <laughs> I did. I felt good. Okay. <laughs> so whatever the fuck Just did. normal yeah, drunk? Yeah. Just normal drunk. Okay. Because it wasn't like we were at the bar buying the drinks with him. Yeah. We were doing a meet and greet and he was just going back bringing drinks to us. So mm -hmm. easily could have. Easily could have yeah. did something. Yeah. 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 And so I was like, man, fuck this. And so I was like, I'm finna, I'm a, I was like, wait till we do the show. And I saw him in the front row and he, him and his friends was like fucking, you know, you know, they was happy to be at the show. Called him on stage. I made him seem like I was about to salute him. Oh, no. And I just fucking went in. I, pour, I, I called him out, and I poured a bunch of beer and shit on his head, kicked him <laughs> off the stage. And his Yo. friend was right there. I kicked his friend in the chest. Uh, and so the guy did this fucking... He went on this... The guy who dissed us went on this, uh, this long tangent on Facebook about how I bullied my fans and how mm. I was bullying. Everyone was just like, yo, that's fucked up. He is a bully. We was at the show. He, you know. And so I was like, I just took, the, so I just said, fuck it. That's cool. I'm, I'm taking it. Bully. Damn. That's amazing. Yeah. He he turned that situation into, into a, a positive. Uh, lifelong moniker at yeah. this point. Yeah. yeah. So 
your shows have been known to be pretty crazy, pretty entertaining. You definitely, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you go to a Jaron Benton show. Clearly yeah. you're going to get caught up might, on stage and a beer board on yeah, your head. Potentially. The fucking chest. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you think that rap shows these days have gotten boring? You know, I don't know. Cause I don't even, I don't even go to rap. You don't go. Mm. I been When's the rap- last show you went to? Ooh. Rap show? Yeah. One guy, one mic. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Not a band. That is. <laughs> uh, damn. I'm trying to think. Last <laughs> rap show. Uh, and I, I went. I, I don't count this because I was there by default. Uh, probably it was <laughs> disclaimer. Logic. And logic. I was just there because Dizzy had it. Dizzy was touring with him, so I just went there to do a song with Dizzy. Okay. Word. So yeah, that's cool. That I think that was it. But I didn't like stay for Logic show, so I guess don't <laughs> didn't even stay, stay for Logic the show. I, no disrespect to Logic. Yeah, I just I sure. guess Logic. He didn't mean it. Yeah. I guess what do you got against mix guys? Yeah. Just, I, you know what, hell. man? So you have been known to like. Troll your friends, goof around, be kind of like, you know, definitely the life of the party and, yeah. you know, like like to have fun, mess with your friends, mess with your fans, even sometimes, whatever. Blake mentioned that you used to prank call him. I did. Do, do you remember these these calls? I prank call I prank call Blake so much I don't even I don't even remember. <laughs> it's just which a blur but, at this point. But like what were some of the voices you would do and like so do you remember like some of the things you would say? Just random shit. I don't even remember. But I know Let me for jog a fact, your memory. I do remember. I used to always I, I prank call Mike. I prank called Blake consistently, but I do not. I probably prank prank called him so fucking much I don't even remember. Probably more times than you regular called them. <laughs> yeah, 100%, yeah. Well, yeah, one of them I thought was funny was Hey Blake, this is Cheryl. Uh, I'm from the HIV clinic. You I did get your test results and they, they are, are positive. positive. <laughs> <laughs> So that just just to jog your memory of like the type of call you would yeah, make yeah. to your alleged friends, co- co-workers, collaborators. Yeah. I feel bad because it just made me think of some shit just yesterday. I got a homegirl. Did you prank call him actually last week? No, nah, I didn't. Now, you should. I am going to do it now. I had a homegirl, man. Somebody stole a dog and I prank called her yesterday saying I was holding a dog for fucking Oh my God. Oh. See? So, yeah, I, mean, I got to cut it out. I'm starting to think the bully That's thing's done. a little bit, you know, true. <laughs> it's he's, it's become a real thing. For sure. Mm-hmm. So, so accident. you know, speaking of Blake and, you know, SMK, right? Like, yeah. wh- you know, Supermarket prior, Knife Attack. Prior to, That's a hard you know, name. prior to yeah. linking up, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. Prior to linking up with them, how would you describe kind of like the music you were making, right? And, you know, kind of how are you like even doing music at that point? I would say... It was a mixture because I still was doing outlandish shit, but just not to the extreme. Mostly I was doing shit. I would say I would, if you was to compare me to someone, I was making more shit like college dropout type shit or, or so late, like gra- late graduation. Mm. Sort of backpack, but like real. It was a lot of fucking. Um, some soul samples in there kind of. Soul kinda, samples. Kinda deal. Talking about my life, talking about. Getting through hard times, it was real soulful. So it really changed. <laughs> yeah, it did. It, yeah, <laughs> for, for sure. Hundred so, percent. So you know, going from that, obviously you you know make the Jaron meets SMKA, yeah. uh, huffing glue with Hasselhoff. Huffing glue with Hasselhoff. That was our yeah. first shit. Yeah. yeah, and I have a hard copy of that somewhere still. You do? Yeah, and Free Basin with Kevin Bacon. Can I have him? No. Okay. <laughs> If you got the original hard copies, I'm I do. I think you're. I think one of them signed too. You signed it really? like a red marker. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's That's gonna need those, Henry. Yeah, I'm gonna need them, man. Yeah, I'm gonna turn into an so, NFT. Come up off of them. <laughs> so huff and glue with with uh, you know Hasselhoff and then free basin with Kevin Bacon, right? Like clearly those are two like satirical, you know, drug related themes. Were there alternative names for either of those projects that we, were like doing we this drug li- with this person? We like, went through a list of shit. Do you remember ones that got I, nixed? I don't. I don't. Um, well, if you were to come up with one right now, what would it be? Uh, <laughs> shit. That's a good question, man. Um, yeah. That's, oh, that's the kind of question. That's going to be tough questions on the One More Time podcast. Ooh. Uh, fucking fentanyl with Frank Sinatra. I don't know. Just like, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Some crazy. That's great. And that was the whole theme in the project. So what, what happened with that is in the journey of making soulful shit, yeah, I was like, man, I'm I'm tired of not. I wasn't necessarily tired of making that type of music. I was just, I was just want to have fun. I just want to say, you know what? Because that was starting to go into a slippery slope. So after the soulful shit, I was kind of experimenting with kind of outlandish type shit for a minute. Um, I would make a song here and there because that was always in me too. So I was like, uh, 
if I do a project with y'all, I don't want to take it serious at all. I just want to fucking yeah. let's think of the most outlandish, stupid name, and I'm gonna make the most outlandish songs I can make. Like I don't want to take this serious. Yeah. So that was my approach with those projects. Yeah. It's just not taking the shit serious and just having fun. Yeah. And I mean they they definitely introduced you or I guess like made you feel comfortable on like more southern like hard hitting 808s type shit. I feel like like you, you like you know sonically there was definitely a shift, right? Like yeah. with you know with that not only the lyrics and the flow and like the tone of it but like sonically the too, production. Right? Yeah. I'm I'm actually I was still rap even though I had soulful joints. I was producing shit for myself. So a lot of the shit I was producing was still kind of like 808. It still sonically was similar to what I do now. Just subject wise, it was more mm. more serious shit. But I also had the mix of the soul shit too. Yeah, like it would be soul samples, and I would just trap them out, kind of. Yeah, mm. or we would take soul samples and make them very boom bap. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely didn't know that you were a producer first, oh, yeah. or I guess like in in the early age, you know, of of Jaron Benton. And again now, and that's all I was gonna say. Yes, did sir. Right did it kind of go where you were producing, and then you kind of shied away from that for the majority of your career up until like you know as of late is that kind of yeah I, I was or were you producing throughout no i was uh, see what made me stop producing is probably i'm not going to stop this time but i'm having the feeling of like maybe i need to go back to getting beats is that it's hard for me to multi not necessarily multitask because sometimes you'll be you know how it is your producer you'll make a beat and sometimes and plus i'm just now you know, it's a learning curve because I'm just starting with a new program. Shout out to uh, Henry and Justin Patron for putting me on the Logic. Logic gang. So so it's a learning curve with that shit first. And then on top of that, I'll make maybe, you'll be making beats all fucking day. Before you look at the time, you're like, oh shit, I've been here for eight fucking hours. Oh yeah. And that eight hours is like, damn, you know, if I write a song, it might take me like two hours, right? Versus making, and I get so lost in that shit and it's like, I'll be so lost. And after those eight to 10 fucking hours just making beats, I might have made three or four beats and I might not even like any of them. <laughs> sure. And batting practice. Yeah. <laughs> I call that batting yeah. practice. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like, it's it's such a process. So then it's like, now I got to fucking find some shit that I want to rap to. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just it's just too much. Also, yeah, I, mean, I feel like after three hours making a beat, it's like you've been listening to that beat for three hours. Do you now really it's like okay, now start writing it? a song to it and keep listening to it. It's like yeah, hell that's no. how when I produce a song and then I got to go mix and master it. I'm like, okay, See, that's another cheese right there, mixing and mastering. <laughs> Tell me about it. Shit. Yeah. And like I don't know if it's the like you know business mind of me, but if if I'm you, I'm thinking of like the ROI, right? The return on the investment of my time. time. Yeah. Sure. If you can write a dope rap in less than two hours borderline, right? That could generate thousands of dollars potentially in, yeah. in, in income for you, right? Then you take the same amount of time to like make beats. Then you have to spend more time to rap on them. I, I don't know, like it, it's, it becomes like a business equation in my head. But like, if you creatively like to do the beats, then I would, I would say stick with it for sure. I have more fun making beats than writing raps. Interesting. Today, obviously, yeah. yeah. yeah always. Always. Really? Yeah, I just... This guy really is like the most rapper, non-rapper <laughs> yeah. ever. Always, man. I don't know, because you can just get lost with just listening to music. Sometimes you listen to samples and just going through samples. You end up liking songs. You end up... Just, it's like it's a fucking... It's like a, a door to so many different things. Yeah. You get to liking samples. You get to listen to other artists, listen to old shit. And it's just like you get to experiment with shit. Um, just ways you can't really do with writing. You know what I'm saying? But writing is, you can experiment and go as far as you want to with writing. But with writing, you have your voice and that's the one instrument that you and, have. Yes. And and you, you have beats, words. You have the whole world. Got, yeah, any you instrument you and want. And you have words only. There's clearly a finite yes. amount of words. Yeah. Yes, you can somewhat create your own depending on, you know, what, what you're doing with lyrics or whatever. But, but sounds. Sounds right. is literally infinite. It's sounds like, is it's, infinite. It's yeah. pretty much. And not know? only that, you have your emotions. Sometimes you're like, yo, I've tapped on so many different emotions that I just burnt out on certain things mm. with writing. Yeah, do you, know you feel like you've like said the same shit in some yeah, different way? Yeah. Like for, for just, fucking, I've said the same shit so many fucking yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. I think so that's I, okay though. No, yeah, it, yeah, it clearly yeah, is, yeah. but just it makes sense why he maybe gets like more excited about the potential of making a beat because yeah. it really yeah. can be something like so brand new. Yeah. yeah. It's a whole nother world. And you plus, might not have ever heard that certain sound that you like built around like a beat you, you know from versus like 
you know, you're clearly crafting the same words, maybe, you know, historically. So Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. And, and with beats, I'm a, I'm a person that listens to so many different types of fucking music that is endless of shit that I want to do. Like, you'll find my, like, yesterday I was just fucking making beats and I was like, uh, I stopped making beats and you'll get caught in this rabbit hole of, you know what, fuck it, let me try to learn how to play fucking something on the piano. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sitting there fucking teaching myself how to play, or not teaching myself, watching a fucking tutorial of how to play Pop Life by Prince on the piano. <laughs> and it's like, that, and then too. hours go by with you doing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This beat making shit is so, it takes you into so, it's so many doors that you just end up going into. And I'm, I got ADHD, so I'm horrible with just, yeah, focusing yeah. on one thing, man. Yeah. yeah. But some yeah. of those rabbit holes like are how the most beautiful shit is made. Mm -hmm. Same time. It seem they seem like sometimes you're not doing shit, but you might like not unlock do shit some. for three hours and then that third hour you do something on accident and you're like, What is this? Yeah. Right here. Yeah, it yeah. sounds uh, it sounds so overwhelming to yeah. me. Yeah. And on top of that, you have that business mind. And and you go to listen to sounds, like you go through these sound banks, there's so many fucking sounds. Yeah. You'll find your like, let's say I want to fucking uh, a weird synth you listen to a hundred fucking synth sounds yeah and you might get the 200 before that's the one you like yeah, you know yeah. What I'm saying? all the time <laughs> I, I could easily like even if you found one you liked right in like the top 50 maybe like the first 50 i could so see myself being like but what if there's something better like right. yeah that's 51 52 yeah. you have like, to settle yeah. at some point that's the worst that's the thing about art it's never actually finished you just uh, it's abandoned yeah you have to decide that uh, i'm done with God, this sounds, piece of art that's stressful i'm like that you know i don't watch that shit like that no more i'm like that with porn like <laughs> it's like yo damn nah, he's like i don't watch this shit anymore <laughs> <laughs> if my if my wife or partner or whatever you got going on is watching, no, nah, like, baby I really, mama, I really I really don't watch porn like that uh -huh. like I used to. But mm -hmm. well, check you know, your, we'll check go, your browsing you history. Like, you know what? Fuck, man. Uh, damn, I can find a fat ass. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you just, know what it's you mean. It's like, At some point, you got to settle. Yeah, yeah. At some point, you got to settle. I'll right, have bro. to do. Yeah, I mean, if, if my wife's watching, I totally don't watch porn yeah, anymore either. Yeah, so yeah. you know, so so schizo. Yeah, I feel like that song is definitely one that kind of catapulted you, yep. you know, your career, right? I mean, would you agree? Yeah, and it's, the, it's so many, it's so much irony behind that too. Oh, yeah. Because do you not even own that song? No, we don't. Crazy. I, I was going to say, no. I, I definitely wanted to talk about I don't. The, the business behind that deal. So doing all that outlandish, crazy shit. So this was at a time like um, the internet, like you didn't have social media then. Mm -hmm. I think we had Facebook. We definitely had Facebook. Mm -hmm. Sure, Facebook. sure. It's MySpace. like 2012 or, or yeah, some 2000, shit. 2011. Yeah. 11, yeah. yeah. But it wasn't like popping, popping like that. Yeah. Um, so in saying that, so when I was, you know, meeting, I always thought, I didn't even always thought, it was just, these are what some of the industry people would say, and this is what I was running to. You need something for the radio. You need something this or that. It was always yeah. something that I didn't necessarily have. Um, they didn't think, you know what I'm saying? It was always just that something. We need like, that single. Yeah, we need that single. We need yeah. that single. Yeah. And that shit didn't sound nothing like a single. And I remember, um, I remember telling my lawyer, I was like, yo, this shit, I was like, somebody wanna, you know, uh buy this fucking song from me. I was like, I don't, I was like, I'm gonna be honest with you, it's a fucking crazy fucking song. <laughs> I don't never see it being on the radio. Yeah, yeah. I don't see the shit doing that. It's so fucking crazy. Should I do it? She didn't say yeah. Um, but he didn't say no. Yeah, she didn't say <laughs> she no. She didn't say no. She probably, she gave me the lawyer answer to where you know she wanted. To, I was just like fuck it. I don't care. So I kind of think I might have me and Cato might have made the executive decision and said fuck it. We'll sell it. Because they was going to give us, and the money, I ain't even going to, I'm not even going to say the amount of money they gave I'm us. I'm so curious. Because <laughs> it it's, it's going to be so painful whenever yeah, you it, say it, the it, number. It's, it's I hope it's painful. five digits. No. It's, it's definitely gonna, it's not. Gonna be painful. It's, it's gonna, definitely not. Oh, yeah, no, it, it is more than five digits. Was it? It is five digits. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I was thinking yeah. something way more painful. Uh, but like it, barely four. <laughs> but still, if he had kept it. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Clearly, it, it was bad. It was it was bad. Yeah. Do you have any type of like back end though? Or like, you still get songwriting? Or anything? Oh, it maybe was a cap. I forget what the uh, cap was. Oh man, he really got fucked. Ooh, we got yeah. fucked. Yeah. Really fucked. Yeah. <laughs> Bent yeah. over, yeah. pants yeah. or shorts around the they ankles. Gave, they put a cap on the like back end, like a certain amount. Oh of, my gosh! Yeah. yeah, and I'm sure that maxed out mad mm -hmm. fast. 
I don't know what the first fuck one. going on with Skit. So it's crazy. Because to him, it was just another song. I thought I he swear to God, songs. my idea. No, I mean, I, I can see how, like, in the moment, yep. you're making tons of music. You're new. You're kind of new to that, like, style anyways. I mean, you said you had been dabbling in it or whatever, but, like, yeah, you probably didn't know, like, whatever. Like, sure, I'll take, like, you know, this, this bag, you know what I and mean? It wasn't even that I was new to the style. It was just that from what I was trying to do in music, I was trying to... You know, take the conventional route, get signed to a label, mm -hmm. and fucking be a big superstar. You right. know, the shit that we all think is going to happen. Yeah, and so and that we all think is the only route. Exactly. Right. Yeah, that's exactly. especially at that yeah. point. at that time. I thought that was yeah. the only route, which is fine. And I was like, this song does not fit what all these people are telling me that I need to have a fucking hit. And yeah. I was like, what? what? And I was I wasn't really familiar with the independent scene like that, so yeah. I didn't have the idea that you know you can just put this shit out yourself and. Well, it also wasn't thriving like it is. It wasn't now. Nah, there were people doing it, obviously, but like, it was like yeah, it was it was definitely people doing it. But when you heard about those people that do, that did it, you always heard that they started with a crazy bag. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. You used to have to literally have a major label to distribute music. There was no distro kid, none of that. Yeah, exactly. You literally, yeah, it was had also to have... hard to also just get your music in places. You know, like because there was still the day, it was still the days of physical product as well. Yep, mm -hmm. making sure you had tapes in the right places physically and stuff. Yeah, so, we yeah, just didn't so, have the knowledge, y'all. Um, yeah, and I remember saying, I remember saying, I to this day, I, that was the same. That was the shit I said. I was like, yo, it's not like this fucking song go go on the radio. Oh. <laughs> Epic fail. Yeah. yeah. So, so like creatively though, obviously this was the time when I think Tyler had just put out Yonkers music video, right? Like around that same I think time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the like the shock factor yeah. was kind of like what people were doing, or at least that was starting to be like what some people were trying. It's you know, needless to say, the video. Was crazy. Was fucking crazy. Yeah, we were just we watched it like three times earlier. And, and what's crazy about the? I'm, 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 no, I'm, go ahead. I'm gonna go back to what me saying that. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's all gonna it's it's all gonna come together. It's gonna come together. There so go. let's do it. Let's do it. The video is crazy because I we didn't have a budget. We had like a very low budget to do a video. So I found a video to write. shot the J Cap. J Cap. We were just talking about J Cap. Yeah, man. yeah. Shot the fucking J Cap. <laughs> Cobra Kai's fucking finest. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> J Cap fucking um No, he was acting on Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. Um y'all can catch him on Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah. J Cat. So this motherfucker. We'll see you on directed. Cobra Kai season one. <laughs> and I was like, man, if you do a low budget video, because you see a bunch of low budget videos with the shit like you would watch the DVDs of like all the trap rappers doing low budget videos and it looked shitty. They was you know, they was always in fucking uh, just with their crew with and their crew in front of a, a, gas a station car, yeah. or a car or yeah. some yeah. shit, and it was just like the shit looked yeah. shitty. So I was like, if we go do something low budget. It has to be entertaining. Mm -hmm. So that was the only reason that video was, I mean, the song is crazy. And I was like, let's just try to match every fucking thing I'm saying. Right. Yeah. And so there we go. Yeah. yeah. I had that, no idea that fucking video was going to fucking go viral either. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. I had no idea. Which Man. is which is distributed by iHipHop. I, I, I yeah. Does yeah. iHipHop I still exist? Like, the, other than owning your shit. No, they did, you know what's Collecting crazy? Jaren's I'm going to put him on a blast. He did a bunch of shit, and I remember uh, he didn't want to be known for it, but he directed a lot of uh, bullshit movies. I ain't going to say bullshit movies, but cult classics. Mm -hmm. Who, the iHipHop guy? Yeah, like uh, Soul Plane. No way. Yeah. That's kind of fun. That's actually yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's kind of um, tight. I don't know how, but he's behind Soul Plane and a bunch of other kind of like a lot of those type of movies yeah. back in the day. Oh man, yeah. I remember watching Soul Plane. That's terrible. Um, <laughs> so from that video, that is how Hobson yeah. enters the picture, right? And yeah. and you know, Funk Volume at that point, like he saw it. Was there like Twitter at that point? How did he see it? All right, so now I'm gonna tell you what's crazy. So check this shit out. So at the time, I'm skipping over a lot of shit because there was a lot of other shit that happened before SMKA. But it's just I'll get into that another day. But so, I mean, if there's stuff you want to share, by all means. He's got a long story. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a long fucking story. But we'll just start with the SMKA shit. Sure. Um, so I was, me and Don Cannon were cool, right? Cannon was giving me beats. I was rapping over some of his shit, too. And so Cannon calls me one time. I'm at the fucking movie theater. Uh, it was me and my ex-wife. We were watching. I don't know what the fuck movie it was. But he hit me, and I was like, fuck, Cannon, keep calling me. This must be important. So I step out and, and get the call, and he, it was... He was like, yo, man, um, I got fucking no ID on the phone. Ooh, okay. So, yeah. Ooh. so he was like, yo, he just, uh, 
I was letting him hear your shit. So no ID on the phone. I'm talking. I'm. I missed the whole movie. I'm literally in the lobby. I, sure, I talking would. to these motherfuckers for like an hour. He's As like, oh, you this, should. I, I don't care what skits, movie's so, going yeah, on. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. Yeah. fuck yeah, Avatar. Like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so Cannon was like, "Yo, I'm hearing this shit, man. This shit's crazy." And Cannon had just got up. He was working with Def Jam at the time. Yeah. And so it was Schizo. I'm shit on Schizo now. Cannon's fuck. I mean, Cannon and no ID. I'm on the phone with them, and no ID. He's like, "Yo, can you fly up to fucking L.A.? To, we want to fucking." Try to meet with you and get some going. Schizo, so me, Mike, Ray, and Slow, we fly to New York, uh, fly to LA. I'm in there. Uh, we go to Def Jam. I'm in the office can, uh, with Cannon and um, No ID, No ID. They and and so the it was another lady, some other um, execs at Def Jam. They were making this shit. They were like, this is the craziest shit they seen. They was bigging this shit up. They were like really excited to do a deal. And they was like, yeah, rolling out the red carpet. Roll, yeah, they were like, we <laughs> want to do this shit now. And um, they was like, how can we make this happen? This shit's crazy. And I'm sitting here like, damn, all this shit I shit it on, this shit has got me in this office now. So, that's a theme. It's always the shit that people don't expect to blow up. Yeah, Every, that's such yeah. a theme. Like, it's crazy how that works. So Def Jam wanted to sign me. Um, they wanted to make it work. And so they were like, yo, can you stay in L.A. for a while? I was like, fuck it, I don't care. So he's like, we want you to meet with, uh, I think, a guy named Barry Weiss. He was the, I think he was the executive over there at the time. Yep. And he was like, he couldn't make it to L.A. He was like, but so can we just can we just bring him here in New York? He was in New York. So um, I was like, fuck yeah, I'll go to New York to meet with him. Make a long story short, I get back to Atlanta. I didn't hear from nobody. And I keep calling Cannon. I'm like, Cannon, what's going on? He's like, still go happen, man. Just... Um, you know, just just be patient. So I'm being patient. And I'm just like, I'm running out of patience. And at the time of me being patient, that's when I fucking meet Hobson mm, and Dane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So but but how did they find you as well? Or like and So and I'm gonna tell you the irony of Hobson. This shit gonna sound crazy. <laughs> All right, so it was a guy I used to produce with Spitzwell. We had a we had a we had a team called Beat Gods, right? So Spitzwell is playing Hobson's video. I never heard of Hobson. Yeah. Was it Ill Mind of Hobson? It, yeah, it was the one where he was dissing Tyler the Creator. Mm, mm-hmm. He's like, man, check this kid out. This shit dope. He's like, he keep killing Tyler the Creator. And I swear to God, I watched it. I was like, yo, I was like, he's snapping, but I'm a, I was like, this shit seemed corny. I don't like this shit. Yeah. That's a fair assessment of Hobson. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I sorry, I, I was like, yo, I was like. I was like, he's snapping, but I was like, but this shit just, I was like, something about it just seemed corny. Real, true story. Um, I didn't know So him. how did you go from that first impression then? It was another song I heard from him. I think it was the shit with him and Tech 9 the psycho shit. Mm-hmm. And I Which, was like, by the way, Tech Nine, no one understands how much money he makes. Barry just posted like the top 10 As earners. an independent yeah. artist. He's raking in like 25 mil or something. He's the, mil, he like, he's yeah, the he, top he, independent he, artist. Yeah. He the, he the that's, man. That's um, crazy. Yeah, so, so, okay, so... When I so Dame hit me up, and once again I'm fucking a space case. I didn't even check my email, so they've been trying to reach out to me, <laughs> yeah. and I finally get in check contact. your email, folks. Yeah, yeah, check your fucking email. Yes. there might be record label CEOs hitting you up <laughs> yeah. for deals. I mean, <laughs> Facts. Who, know, who knows? And so I'm talking to Dame, and he was like, "Yo, I heard you know," and I, I was like, "Oh shit, that's the Hobson dude." You know, I was like, "Yeah," because yeah. uh, as much as I thought that fucking video was corny. I can't shit on Hobson. Like, Hobson's skills was crazy. He's I was super I, talented. I was like, yo, this Kidding motherfucker. Me? Still a good yeah. rapper. When obviously. I heard it, the hurt, the song, I was like, he's fucking snapping. Yeah. But I was just like, yo, I just didn't like the, I just thought the video came across kind of corny. Yeah. But who the fuck am I? So. Jaron Benton. Exactly. <laughs> the taste man. Jaron fucking so, Benton. So, I talked to Dame, and Dame was like, yo, we, we, we you know, uh, we've been peeping you and whatever, yada, yada, yada. And so, he's like, yo, can you. I was, I was, you know, I expressed interest. Like, fuck it, I ain't got nothing popping right now. Don Cannon hasn't called me back. Yeah, <laughs> Cannon didn't call me back. No IDs, no fucking ID. silent <laughs> crickets yeah, from no ID. Yeah. So Dane was like, yo, come up to a show. We got a show in um, uh, Arizona. Okay. But I met him in Vegas and we drove it. We, drove, we, we met in Vegas, then we went to Arizona. I met everybody and everybody was cool as fuck. Hobson was cool. Dizzy was cool. He was there at the time. Dane was cool. This was the first time where I met, you know how this shit is with these industry people, man. And not shitting on industry niggas, but it's just a certain attitude and a certain 
a, a lot of bullshit that comes with you know sure, when sure. you're trying to chase the record label shit. These are the first dudes I met that were seemed like very genuine people. They had they didn't it wasn't promising they wasn't over promising anything. Everything they said that they can do sound like yeah, they was like yeah we don't we don't want to change the music. We're not trying to look for you to do a fucking hit single. We just want to we want you to do what you do, but we just want to help support it on an independent le- level. Mm-hmm. And so I met him. We went. To, we did a show. We had a show in Arizona. It was uh, Hobson, Kid Inc., and I feel like it was somebody else, Dizzy, and somebody else. Show was crazy. Show was fucking crazy. And I saw how they were doing it. The energy of everyone matched exactly the same energy I wanted to do, mm-hmm. and it matched. The, it, it was just such a perfect match, man. Yeah. Um, and so. I flew back and Mike came out there with me too. Shout out to Mike. Mike Shout out Wahlberg. Mike Wahlberg. Mike one Wahlberg time. Was out there with me. Mike, we'd love to have you on, on the, the podcast. podcast for Mike, sure. yeah, Mike, come he's on. Doing big, he's doing big yeah, stuff. He do, yeah, he, uh, what are you, Rock the Bells, ain't he? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Mike, still doing A3C? Like Chief. Who? A3C? Was no, he doing no, A3C? no, he's no, A3C. no, he's with, yeah, he's okay. with Rock the Bells. Word. Like, I guess on the on the radio side and the festival side yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he mm-hmm. told me he was, yeah. He's doing like, she's like chief creative doing or something. Big, Who knows? Like Crushing chief it. content, something, but. He's um, a chief. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so Mike was out there. So you like, you know, really just fucked with their energy. You loved the presentation of obviously like them yeah. performing and shit. Yeah, it was just Cool like, bunch of guys. Cool just good vibes people. all around. It was, the vibe. It was, felt right. It felt fucking right. Yeah, you could yeah. see yourself with them. Yeah, like, yeah. And I was like, fuck it. And. It wasn't like some crazy long term shit they was trying to do, um, and you know we went back and forth with the paperwork a little bit. But other than that, man, I'm gonna say the deal was so fucking fair. Yeah. Compared to you know other shit I've I've, I've You've gotten, gotten into, into yeah. since then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> a little yeah. foreshadowing yeah. to uh, yeah. stuff we'll get to. Shout but. out Rock Nation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the rock. But, yeah, but fucking, uh, they were cool as fuck, man, and um. I took a chance. I remember I was talking to Mike and he was like, man, you can sit here and wait on this Def Jam shit or you can see what happened. Like, you know, give it a year. See what happened. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck it. Let's do it. Ah, like Def Jam. I don't know. Like, I don't know if I could have done what you did. Well, I'm not, I think I might have waited it out. And that's what I'm saying. It's stories, you know? it's stories before that. Yeah, that I've made been you not through that before. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. there was a bad taste in your mouth from yeah. waiting. Yes, yes. Yeah. Coming out empty-handed. Way. Yeah. I so you were like, done with that shit. I was done with that shit. And that that shit happened like I know you ain't supposed to chew gum on the fucking. Air. You can do whatever you want, man. Yeah. We unorthodox here. Yeah. yeah. So you're, I've been you're through Jaren that shit. Fucking Benton, Thank man. You, do whatever you want. Chew we gum. went through that shit so much. Yeah. Um, of the promising, meeting the labels. And over promising, they want to fuck with you. Then you don't hear shit from them. Then there's just always something. Yeah, because you've been in this shit since like 03. Yeah, I've been doing it for a minute. Yeah. 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 I was signed to a production deal with DJ Eddie F, um, who's Heavy D's DJ. He 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 ended up in having, Can, he put on a bunch of art. Yeah, dude, production people. deals don't even like exist anymore, I feel it's, like. I would never suggest anybody sign a production deal. I don't mm-hmm. even I don't even know if they're a thing as much anymore. They probably are. Oh, they are? Um, okay. Yeah. They are. Because I know that was like a huge. Like it was bigger it, back in the day. It was like a quasi record deal, essentially. Yeah. It was like the small. It was like a baby re- or like you know, like it's kind of yeah. like a light. It's like a light it's version. So like they filtering you. Like yeah, you signed to the person, and that person is trying to, to get you a bag. Yeah. So it's yeah. kind of like the joint venture route now, where maybe these like tiny independents are like securing ba- you know bags from like majors and shit. It's kind of like that, I guess. But. It, it's sort of like the equivalent of like if I started, not even a label. Let's just say I started a company where I have artists, producers. And I, Jaron Benton Enterprise, signs with fucking Warner Brothers. Yeah. And all my services are filtered. You know, Warner Brothers want to use my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to deal with Warner Brothers, my, you know, Jaron Benton Productions, but the artists are with me. So it's it's a, I ain't going to say it's shitty, but it is shitty. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. for sure. Yeah. It's a little watered down. So one thing that, you know, I was I was looking at some other interviews that you did and I thought that this was, you know, important for people to know. So Grandma's Basement, the project. Yeah. That that's a literal title, right? Yeah. That's so, actually his grandma, right? In the, yeah, that's in, my grandma. In the cover. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my real grandma. That's actually yeah. your, that's your my real, real that's, grandma. Yeah, that's in yeah. her living room. Yeah. Shout out your grandma because yeah. yeah. that rest in peace, cover man. art. Yeah. Rest in peace because that peace. shit... Was hard. I love yeah, that cover. For those that aren't familiar, go look it up. But she's holding Mike, a fucking me, me and Mike, yeah, that's our, shotgun or something. Uh, Mike was there. We went to my grandma's house. At the time when I did the album, I was not 
Yeah, that's what I wanted to yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't. When I made that album, I was not living with my grandmother. Um, it was just past experience. You know what I'm saying? So I took that album was a reflection of when I was living in her. Mm. Yeah, and so and so what was happening at, at that time in your life? It was just the time I had just had my daughter. Um and it was it was and when you have a kid, some people go through it. Some I'm having don't. one in May. Oh, okay. You know what I'm okay. So I'm doing go through two you months. Don't have your shit together. You go through this journey of looking at yourself like, what the fuck am I doing? Mm. Yeah. And it's like, I gotta get it together. Like, holy shit, I'm having a fucking kid. Yeah, and I was doing bullshit, you know, running the streets, still doing. Now at the and I was like, you know what, I got to make a point, yeah, uh, to either go left. If you keep going left, you're going to end up in jail. So you need to get it together, go 100 percent legit. And so that struggle, that's what that reflection. I I, I end up, I was end up, I end up having to move in with my grandmother. Yeah, and um, that was. That's, my that's where that came yeah. from. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, but you mentioned like it was like real dark. Like it wasn't dark. Let me say this. Because in another my, interview, you had said some like I was dark. That's what I meant. My like thinking. Was yeah. Dark. Exactly. Yeah, you were having was, like suicidal was, thoughts. Yeah. And, I attempted suicide. Yeah. Oh wow. It was Damn. horrible because I was looking at myself. I was thinking I was a failure because yeah. I was like, "Damn, I have a kid. I don't have no money." I had to move back in with my grandma. Uh, my kid's mom is only doing big things and shit. And it's like, I was lost. I was like, this rap shit ain't working. I'm chasing a fucking dream that's not promised. So it was just having the wrong thoughts. Like, yeah. So all of those, all of that negative thinking, I, I was like feeling like I wasn't shit. I was feeling like, like I was just, and it, and it was just like, Thinking the worst of myself versus yeah. like loving myself and thinking positive, like thinking like, yo, bro, you'll get through this shit. It was just like, I don't want to do this shit, man. And yeah. then on Damn. top of that, not having the, not, not shitting on my kid's mom, um, but having outside, like look and also reinforcing like, yo, you ain't, you know what I'm saying? Just like. I you didn't have people uplifting you. My grandma. But besides mm -hmm. grandma, I yeah. guess. Yeah. But like others that were maybe yeah. important to you as well. Or, there were, or let me least, take, I take that back. There, least, were, there were people in my circle, but it was like I was so in this fucking trance of trying to prove to my kid's mother that I wasn't mm -hmm. a fucking fuck up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like I valued her opinion. And I think I valued her opinion a little bit too much. Um, and it didn't help. So yeah. it was a one point of time. And shout out to my homie Sterling, who's actually the trap king. Check his documentary out on Netflix. He a nigga to save cats now. But yeah. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Shout out to him. It's a weird occupation, he, but me and him both was going through some shit. But anyway, I was just in this dark place, man. I um was like, I'm I'm gonna fucking take these pills. Yeah. So I had yeah. a fucking bottle full of pills. But I, I it was like I knew I didn't want to die, but I knew I didn't want to live neither. So it was like, instead of swallowing these pills, I'm gonna contemplate. If I really want to do this, but I'm gonna let them all dissolve in my mouth. Yeah. So I have a mouthful of pills, and mm. the homie called, and when he called, I don't know what it was. It was just I spit him out, and I talked to him, and he just like came over to the crib and just like gave me a bunch of just positive energy yeah. that I needed to help uplift me. But it's still after that. It wasn't still. It wasn't a an easy road. It wasn't like after that. It was all good. It still was. Me battling these dark thoughts of me being a piece of shit loser with a kid. Because yeah. it was, you know, it, it was crazy. That's, Check in on your friends. Crazy. Yeah. Check yeah. in on your friends. Check in on your Check friends on your for sure. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. I mean, that shit's real, especially in today's environment. I feel like it's definitely getting like more shine. You know, people are talking about it more, which yeah. is probably why it seems like it's more prevalent. But it was probably just as prevalent back then, but just no one Not was fucking talking, talking about, about it. Talking about it. Yeah, yeah. And it was such a like stigma around it that, you know, it didn't seem like acceptable if you were thinking that way and like mm -hmm. and that, and that type yeah. of shit. What's what's interesting for me now that I'm hearing this story, because I thought it was all you were actually in the basement and you wrote the album there. To put yeah. yourself back in that yeah. dark mindset that's fucking that's suicidal yeah. in its own right yeah 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 why yeah. would you do that why to you want to go back not, not all and you know what not all of the songs was really sure but i mean that. even just calling the project that like, and even just knowing that that's what this project is about because that was that so, seems that, like fucking psychopathic that was looking dude, back like, at that was so significant yeah 
changing. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. all that shit that I went through, and and I went through sure. all the shit I went through in my grandma's basement. Yep. And disclaimer: my grandma has a beautiful house, so it wasn't like it was everything like a baller in, it, basement. It, it, it was, <laughs> my grandma, everything in her house was love, and she mm. gave me love, and she would she would instill so much positive shit. But I was in such a dark place that I couldn't really take that information in. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying that to say is I seen some of my darkest moments in that basement and there was a time where I was like, I didn't want to fucking live and to, and I couldn't even let alone seeing myself, you know, I've been chasing this rap shit and the shit wasn't working. And so to see, damn, how I pulled myself up out of that with the help of my grandma and, um, and to see, like, damn, just a minute ago, you know, we, you know, we got schizo and shit done went off. I don't sign a deal to reflect back. That shit, going through those hard times, helped make me that person yeah. Yeah. to create that. You know, does that make any sense? Yeah. yeah. Whether it was so, good or bad, it was significant. It no, was it, a turning point. It was a turning yeah. point. It was significant. Yeah. Yeah. No, so which I'm, I'm glad that you, like, had the courage to, like, put yourself back into, because because clearly, even if there were just a handful of records that were really reflective of it, to still like call the project that and to have it be that theme in your head. I don't know. That sounds like it's like owning your, your uh, demons. Yeah. Like, like owning your demons up, which I think is actually you, really I'll cool. I'll tell you a crazy story. Is yeah. When I was living there, shout out to my homie, Sean Jester. He was another uh, intricate part of my life who was just a good friend who was just helping me and, and instilling a lot of positive shit in me. But I also say this, that I, I was working on a project called stress, anger, frustration, and entertainment. It was called safe. When I was in my grandma's basement, I shot an album cover, literally writing the fucking shit in her bed. I just never put the shit out. Damn, this was wow. before. This was the before fucking. Do you uh, still have it? Yeah, I, the song's probably a bunch of places. Yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, I know my homie still got uh, all the photos and all that shit. Yeah. Nice, nice. So that's the real my grandma's basement. Yeah, to be honest with you. Wow, uh, that's that's dope. Um, so. I do want to touch just briefly on the double XL cover. Yeah. Right. That was 2014. Um, the cipher was incredible. Like, holy shit. Although I long in cipher. That was a long, day. although I'm not a fan. Although I'm not really a fan of Troy Aver, little baby who was in your cipher. <laughs> John Connor. I fucked with the John people's Connor rapper. Yeah, I yeah. fucked with the people's rapper, yeah, yeah. even though he just did basically Eminem, you know, covers, but anyways, so I wanted to ask this and hopefully you'll answer, but if you don't, I understand. <laughs> Who should have made the the cover that did not? Let's start there. Who should have made the cover that year that didn't? Was there someone you like were really fucking with that didn't make the cover that year? That's I would answer that question. I just don't remember who was like popping at that time. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Who made the cover should that have shouldn't have made the cover? <laughs> um I and let me and I ain't gonna say they shouldn't have made the cover. I was just shocked when I saw um August Alcina on the cover. Mm-hmm. Don't even know who that is. He's an R&B. He's he had the one yeah, really big. Jada Pinkett. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> but jealous. And, it, and, it was, and I wasn't shocked because of his talent. He was just an R&B singer. He wasn't a rapper. So so anti like double XL cover. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. oh, your, your yeah. freshman class type. Shit I think where... he might have been the first R&B singer. Yeah, I wonder if they've ever done that again. Rappers. I think yeah. Ty, oh, Ty Dolla Sign too was on there too. Okay, but Ty Dolla Sign rap like, and yeah. fucking sing. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Sing rap. Kind I of wouldn't okay. shock that Ty Dolla. It was more. It was more August Alcina. And it, like I said, it wasn't that I didn't think he was supposed to be on there. It was just um, it was R and B singer. Did he sing in the cipher? I don't even fucking know. That's a good question. Because <laughs> uh, I don't. I, I don't remember. Like, yeah, I only I watched, think I seen. Yeah, it. I only I, watched your part. Like yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't too. go back to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too. I'm surprised you even watched that. Yeah, no, um, I watched that shit. So the other one that you know I watched, and I just wanted to shout this one out, was the one. With Sai High that we were talking about oh, off yeah, camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, just having you two back to back. Yeah. Legendary. It was just such an enjoyable moment for like yeah, rap shout fans. Out to Sci High, man. We yeah. love Sai High. Yeah. We've we've talked about Sai High several times on the show. Oh, yeah. We likened him to Jace, who's another like super dope yeah, songwriter yeah. and artist. Um, just pen game crazy. And then one of our other guests is just like huge fan and kind of like, you know, big inspiration for him. So Dre. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I, I just, I loved seeing that, man. That was like such a cool moment for me to relive. Just, I, I love doing my research for this episode, by the way. It was so fun, oh. like diving back into your like chronological, like, you know, past and just yeah. all the different shit you've done. I tell people, um, go back to that double X. I'll tell you a fucking, uh, a, gi- a gym 
I want I, I wanted to um, get Russ at Funk Volume. Ooh, like early on. Early, and nobody knew who he was at yeah. the time. And so I, I I brought him to Dame, and Dame was like, "Yo, this this he is dope." Uh, he's like, "He'll be the perfect fucking uh, fit." I was like, "Bro, we need to jump on." He like, no, he he wasn't even known at all. And um, how did you know him? Uh, someone, I think somebody he gave his music to a friend of mine. Okay. And a friend of mine let me hear, and I was like, "This dude is dope." I was like, well, "What the fuck is he doing?" He's like, "I don't think he's doing nothing." Yeah. And so um, he's just releasing a song just a week. Putting out music. <laughs> yeah. putting out At that time, music. he wasn't even releasing okay. a song yeah, a week. Yeah, yeah. I think he didn't even have like he might have had like five thousand views yeah. total yeah. on mm-hmm. one of his okay. videos. So like really, 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 young. really, really fucking. Yeah. Early. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. And so Russ, we flew Russ out to New York on my double XL performance. So he was there. Just Actually, watching, yeah, he was, yeah, he was there with us. Just, yeah. yeah, he came to the fucking double. Yeah, hell yeah, that's a cool. Yeah, that's a nice tidbit. Yeah, that's cool. So, yeah, that's cool. So fact. now he's got the number one song I think right now because of popping. TikTok, yeah. <laughs> which is crazy for sure. So you know, I don't want to be this too a pulp, like I said before we got on camera, but eventually Funk Volume would you know yeah. break up. It would fall apart. It would cease to exist. Right. So. What is your just brief synopsis of kind of, you know, and you've said this a few different ways over different interviews, but I want to kind of hear like in today's, you know, setting, what do you think really wasn't, wasn't working? Like kind of, you know, what, I don't what, what think was, it wasn't nothing that wasn't working. I just think it was hopping damn miscommunication and mental, I ain't going to say immaturity, but just ego. Maybe? When I say mental immaturity, I mean, not immature in, in the sense of like uh, you're a fucking adolescent, but just just immature the way you handle things. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a little bit what I think miscommunication and just immaturity on handling confrontation. How much ownership do you take? None. I had nothing. Only ownership I take is I wish I would have called Hobson after he blew up. And um, talked him and, and and talked to him and say, man, you you tripping? Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was more so like, so you were trying to stay clear of it. Where maybe now in your, you know, I think me, today's I would, mind, you would say, hey, I'd, mind, I'd pick yeah. up, I'd pick up the phone and call. Yeah, him. Today's mind, I would call Dame and Hobson. Yeah. yeah, and I would just explain to him like, listen, man, we got something fucking great. We yeah. started something great. Let's not like, let's not let this shit in. Over this silly yeah. shit. Like, this is just, we got something too big for it to end over something this small. Yeah. yeah. I wish I would have did more of that. Instead, I was like, man, fuck y'all niggas. I'm, I, you know, <laughs> I was like, fuck it. I just have to get it how I get it on my own. Yeah. So yeah. that, and it, that's why I was at that time. Instead of, and I mean, I think I might have told Hop, I was like, fuck it, man. You only ended then. Hey, fuck it. That's on you. It was more of a nonchalant attitude I had mm-hmm. towards it versus, this no, this, this this can't end like this. This should be fucking. What are we doing? You know, we have such a great thing, a great infrastructure. Everything is great, and it's just this little thing, like to to end something so big for something yeah. so small. Is I feel like y'all important. were just right behind strange music when it comes to independent hip hop yeah, labels. Was jet, yeah, we were strange just and then fucking, funk volume, right? Yeah. I mean, what's that- crazy is when we ended it. I think a week before we all had a conference call. And we were just going to go into this big fucking thing of like things we wanted to change in the direction we were going. Mm. It was a positive, and um, we didn't even get we didn't even get to to know, execute against execute. that, yeah, exactly. that like, yeah. you know vision. Yeah, it's frustrating. I wish I wasn't dizzy. Dizzy was that guy. I'm gonna give it to Dizzy. I think Dizzy did uh, he call? I think Dizzy. Yeah, I was just like man, but he couldn't. It. Yeah, he could, you know he couldn't sway them obviously to to work shit out clearly. Yeah. So nah, he could. was it like a hard no? Like fuck you, it Dizzy. Was hard, yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it was a hard no. Is I think from where Hobson was standing, and I think Hobson would look back at that shit and say the same thing. It was just like it was so. It was just really what, and not saying he he wasn't entitled to feel the way he felt, and Dane was, and I'm not saying Dane wasn't entitled to feel the way he felt. Yeah, I just think the um. The action for the action was just a little too much for yeah, that yeah, yeah. situation. Yeah. Had, yeah, had they was it kind of surprising or had they shown like signs of tension? Yeah, yeah, they always had signs of tension. Okay, cool. It was just all like right. bickering. It yeah, was I just, just didn't like, know if yeah, it was yeah. like it was all, out yeah. of the blue. Were they fifty fifty uh, partners? Yeah, like, I think it was fifty fifty. Yeah yeah, 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 I think so. Yeah, it was always bickering between them two. Um, 
So I wasn't surprised. That's why, I, and that's why I had the nonchalant attitude. Right. I was like, here we go again. With, uh, Just another fight. We'll get over yeah, this. Yeah. To be it, honest, yeah, like the the infrastructure or the organizational structure does already kind of, in my mind, like sound a little messy. Right. You know, you have Dame, who's not an artist, not a creative. He's just like a pure, like he business. was like a business grad or yeah. something. Right. But he, but he, but he, what, what he did though, the things that he brought to the table. No, for sure. Was amazing. But just the fact that he's co-owners with the head artist, artist or the lead artist, like the yeah. founding artist and he's managing him and right. Yeah. But then, and, and see, I don't know. Just like, as I was saying it out loud earlier, I was there, like, that and, sounds and, like And messy, that was the thing that we honest. all, and Dame wasn't managing me at first. It was when my homie died, I went to Dame because I was like, he would be the best manager. He knows me, and I, I liked how he moves. Yeah. Um, do people recommend you not do that? Like, did your lawyer recommend you not do that? Like, your CEO is nah, your manager? Is nah, that conflict of nah, interest? No, nah. I'm going to be 100% with you, bro. Uh, and it's like this to this day. A lot of times, man, I I never really had a close circle. I ain't going to say my my lawyer. I, I Let me not say that because I... I, I I never really had people that were a hundred percent like Team Jaren. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It was kind of more like interests me. Yeah, in mind. I was like, yeah, I was like always kind of on my own. They were more playing the straight lawyer, like giving you the best legal jargon, not like having your serious best interests at heart. They were not, gonna. No, like I think talk. my lawyer had my best interests at heart, but I'm just saying, like, my lawyer had a whole bunch of other shit to do too. Like, she yeah. had a other bunch of clients. So you were maybe like. It, Not as much like of when a my priority homie, yeah, as there you. There you go. That's exactly what it is. It was like when my homie died, who me he, and was, him, he was he team was team Jaren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So after his passing, there was no team Jaren. Damn. And that and Mike was too, but Mike had he had A three C. He was yeah. Mike went and did A three C. Yeah. So and I remember telling Mike, Mike, uh, he's like, man, I just got so much shit. I was like, bro, don't feel bad if you can't do this management shit no more. Like, yeah. I recommend if you got a good fucking opportunity, like. You got my blessings to go after that shit. Yeah. And so That's no more Mike, no more slow. There is no team Jaren. I'm just in this, I'm just in this bitch There's just Jaren. solo dolo. Yeah. <laughs> trying to figure this shit out. So so I say that to say that, yeah, that that's so when I went to Dame, that I was like, fuck it, he's the closest person. I've been dealing with him for a couple of years now. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna see, you know, what's up with him managing me. So that was my decision. It wasn't like Dame. Had some mastermind like I'm going to manage all of these guys. You know what I'm saying? That was our decision. Yeah. And I think at the time before they before Funk Volume split, Hobson expressed to Dame that he was about to look for new management. I did too. And Dame was like, Dame didn't give me any uh, like pullback. Like, no, no, you don't need another manager. He's like, man, you feel that's something you need to do? Then yeah, do it. And so for I, sure. Yeah, because I just wanted that team, Jaren. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. So coming out of that situation, you, know, you talked about this before on another interview, but I wanted to kind of dive deeper into it, right? Like you were, you were kind of excited to say like, fuck it, I'm about to do my own shit yeah. and like build my own thing, get my own fans, right? Because I mean, you were struggling with like, you got Dizzy Stoner fans, you got Hobson's Weirdo fans yep. that were like way this side yeah. and you were maybe like over here in your you know area, but- I feel like you probably didn't feel like you had necessarily just your fans always. That nah, you were kind of nah. like pulling from these two other two worlds and it was like, fuck yeah. that. Like you wanted your own shit. So like what were you thinking? Like, you know, what were your first moves? You're kind of like, what were you thinking coming right out of that, like, you know, on your own? Um, I was like, fuck it, I'ma just try, I'ma just try to invest my money in me. And but what I didn't realize, number two things, I was getting way too fucked up. So, <laughs> that's, that's that was a down that was like not gonna work um and then i didn't realize like yo bro the reason why this funk volume shit is running like a fucking weld oil machine is the infrastructure you know the talent is there and i'm not shitting on any you know of course hobson's contribution he's hobson but dane put we had such a great infrastructure like um we had people to help us out with with merch people to help us out with the touring we had you know jamie in brooklyn there and it was like um we had so many infrastructures and at the time we signed a warner too so with warner they you know it was just a bunch of what's the word i could say it was uh 
like role players. Yeah, it was it was it was a well oiled machine. It wasn't yeah. like yeah, like it kind of made you think probably you were taking it a little bit for granted that it seemed yeah. like it was working easier than like yeah, yeah. oh shit, now exactly. I need to get all these people from myself. Yeah, yeah. or no, now <laughs> I have to do, do all, all these this things. shit myself. Yes. yes, and I didn't. Yeah, when I then when I so I was what was like, like the first biggest L? <laughs> uh, like you know, come and do your own thing. Like fuck, I ordered the wrong merch, or like you know what I mean? Like or, or not or like big, or I, I don't know how to the like biggest yeah. L, and at the time. And not shitting on the, because at the time I had found a different manager, right? Okay. The manager I found, and I'm not gonna put his name out there because I don't want this to come across like I'm shitting on him. We could probably find it out, but go ahead. (laughs) So that manager was used to dealing with artists that were in the mainstream. Like he managed. Oh, this is Orlando McGee, huh? (laughs) (laughs) I was moving independently. And so I say the biggest L. Was when I did, um, I ain't gonna say it's the biggest L because the shit still was okay. It was when I did my first project after Funk Volume, which was Slow Motion 2. And just that rollout of how I never wrote it. Like, yeah. when, if I would roll an album out with Funk Volume, we had everything in place. We had the PR, we had yeah, yeah. fucking the date, we had everything. Yeah. It was just like, you know, we had conference call. Structure. How we do structure. Yes, yeah. it was structure of how we doing this shit. Yeah. Um, we just, just do a press run. Yeah. We milked whatever the fuck we did our best to, to take full advantage of every project yeah. each of us put out. With this shit, it was just like, you know, we just kind of just, th- we, we didn't, it wasn't, you just uploaded it. And like, <laughs> yes. that's, that's good. Yeah, we didn't have no type of Drag rollout. Drag the file yeah. here. Yeah, we had no rollout. We had no, um, it was just night and day from what I was used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But by me, just at that time, um, putting so much emphasis in fuck it, I'm just gonna party and just get fucked up. That I wasn't even really, I cared, but it was like I didn't. Um, I cared, but I guess me putting the substance in myself was kind of numbing me from fucking really paying attention to when you, you know when you're sober. It's like oh shit. Mm. This is bad. Yeah, this is bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. This rollout's yeah. not going well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Versus, I knew, like, I knew versus it wasn't like, going... oh, I'm fucked up. So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, eh, yeah, it's not going well. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I say that that was probably the biggest L. Just watching like, and that album came out like at a time where you, I still could gain more. Where it wasn't like the album came out fucking three years after funk. The album came out, I think, like. Three or four months after we departed, so mm. yeah, still so like, you were still hot, yeah, yeah or like yeah. you were still like very yeah. relevant, yeah, exactly, like, yeah. and like you know, definitely kind of like yeah, we missed the, priming, yeah, exactly. So yeah. every project after that was just like it just wasn't, it just wasn't that infra- that infrastructure that that Funk Volume had was just was definitely taken for granted. That's yeah. another theme that we've had is like the importance of a, a team that Funk you can team. really rely on people. Yeah. To do certain jobs that you can count on and you can call up anytime yeah. Yeah. is massive. No one's really doing this shit like with all funk by themselves. Volume, and I don't mean to just keep beating this funk volume shit up, but it was like- I know, I was saying we weren't every going week, to. Yeah. Every He's week, it. we would have a conference call. Mm. Every week, there was a plan in you place listening? to like, hey, this week, Jaren, yada, 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 Dizzy, yep. yada, 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 Hopson, yada, yada. You know, it was a plan, a fucking plan- of and, and we things executed to do. that plan. Yeah, things to do. It's not a fucking week to go by where we didn't have. That was where not you didn't one take week. steps forward. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was not even no if you weren't week. like yeah. charting that week yeah. or something. But yeah. if you did X Y Z that week, you could look back at that week and say it was a success. We yes. were productive. Yes. Yep. Every week was That's productive. Big. It's huge, man. And we have Dame. We, we didn't miss. We didn't miss a that. conference call. Um, even if even if he was on tour, had some other shit going on. And when I say on tour, he might have been out with Dizzy or he might have been doing his own shit. There was a conference. There was never a conference call miss. And there was never a point of each individual's, um, you know, shit that they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like everyone's got everyone homework. got. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Everyone yeah. got taken care of. It's as like, far okay, as like, Dizzy, the- this week, Dizzy working on an album. His first single coming out. Let's everyone get behind Dizzy. Let's yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Oh, Jaren, he's got a show here. So won't you go do this show? You know what I'm saying? It was yeah. just very. It was. It was organization, man, and it was. Yeah. I, I realized no, that. Dame organ- sounds like he definitely had, yeah. a, like you know, the ship for sailing sure. in the right direction. Yeah, Mike sure. and Blake was on some a lot of them conference calls too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Shout out eight hundred eight Blake, yeah, a past guest on uh, Blake, on dog. the podcast. So, 
most people would think that signing a, a deal with Rock Nation for a project <laughs> Here would we be go. like the mecca of things to do. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, it's the best thing. But like, it clearly was not the right fit for you. N let me say this, because I actually signed a fucking, dis I can't talk about. Oh that God. Was, that was a part of, well, I'll talk about that it. Was so. of the, that was a part of them <laughs> letting me out of the deal was I can't. But I'm going to say this. It necessarily wasn't, that it wasn't a fit, it goes back to that thing that I'm saying. There was never, it's me trying to do this shit. It's, no, it's not a team Jaren. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah, not like- yeah. It was just, just on paper, Rock Nation. It was, yeah, and it's like, if you don't have a team in a building with you, fucking, you lost in the sauce. Because yeah. these motherfuckers, they ain't go really, not saying that they don't care about you, but if you ain't got- they have other things they to do. They got other shit to do, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. So You're, that's what that was. It was It wasn't Jaron Benton Enterprises at that New York yeah. building. It yeah, was it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> Team Jaron. And then the the person that I did have on a team <laughs> yeah. got fired from yeah. the fucking yeah. Rock Nation. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then when, Shout out to him. Yeah. And then when he got fired, <laughs> you know, me and him kind of parted ways. And it wasn't just because he got fired. We parted ways because it was that same shit. It was like, I, I can't even get this. Can't get my nigga on a phone call. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's not gonna work. That was it's a like, tough year for him. That's yeah. not gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> so what the fuck? Yuck Fu though. Great what by the great way, great like, name incredible of a project. Name first of all. Project. And that was a collab project with Kato. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy is um they didn't I ain't gonna say Rock Nation, but they expressed A and R's and people expressed because me and Kato had was working on that project before I got signed to Rock Nation. Yeah. And we were just gonna put it out ourselves. And I was like, Kato, I was like, I'm, I just got this deal. I was like, let me try to let me try to see if I can fucking finesse them letting us put this project out over there. And they were like, man, you want your fucking first project on Rock Nation to be with, you know, an unknown producer, yada, yada. I was like, he ain't unknown. To me, that's, I was like, that's, I work with this dude. Like, I've been working with him with, you know, damn near, you know, since the shit. And look at him yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> and crushing I, it. Yeah. And I was like, uh, and they, they didn't want to do it. They was kind of giving me pushback. And I was like, bro, this is, this, this is it, man. Like, let me, let me bring my dude over here. I even tried to get Kato on the cover with me. They were like, nah. They, they cut that off. Um, mm. They shut that shit down. Cause they, and, 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 and rightfully so, they expressed Sounds me. like some like, racist against Asian no, shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, rightfully, they was just like, yo, bro. We love you, Kato. This is my, I'm going to say this is a gift and a curse for me. If I fuck with you, I'm always trying to go hard with my people. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I like that. I like that. I like that team shit, man. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like I it. like that. Yeah. I like coming to a place with my team and people I fuck with. Like, that's what I'm used to. These are the people I rock with. These are the people I've been rocking with. So let me, you know, yeah. it's just, a, it's just that's my support system. Yeah. So I was rallying so hard for Kato on that shit. And it was just like, um, like we didn't sign Kato. Like, you really going hard for this dude. And, um, and so I was like, man, let's, I was like, let's, let's put him on the fucking colors. Like, you, want him? you know what I mean? It was just a yeah. lot of... A lot of pushback, rightfully so, not saying they were wrong for the pushback because they didn't sign Cato. Yeah. They signed me and they and the investment was Jaron Benton. Oh, I mean, not, I see where they're coming from. For sure. Not Jaron Benton and the fucking yeah. producer. Yeah. But he executive um, produced the project. He exec yeah. Was, so but, that's got to count for something. And that's what I wanted. I wanted him to. But his was, debut project, I mean, you know, I definitely yeah, understand debut, where they're coming from. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I get it. I got it. You know, if you were a longstanding roster artist of theirs, yeah, exactly. A few projects down the road, sure, do whatever the fuck yeah, you want. We've yeah. already seen some yeah, great, great stuff together. Exactly. But like you know, so I, I definitely see where you know they're yeah. coming from there. And, and also, I don't want to people at the people at Rock Nation was super fucking cool. Um, so it really wasn't that it wasn't a fit. I say the thing that got me was just the way that um, major labels, like when we were on Warner, we were on we had a distribution deal with Warner with yeah. Funk Volume. So Funk Volume and the way we move was still the same. Nothing yeah. changed. With Funk Volume, I mean with Rock Nation and any other mainstream um, label you sign to is just directly an artist, they dictate to you how you move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the way you move or the way they move may not be beneficial. If you're, if you're an independent artist and you're used to a certain type of structure that's not necessarily major label structure, and then you have to do it a different way. It might not. It might not work for you. You yeah. know what I'm saying. And plus, at the same time, it might not work. And if you don't have a team and or people in the building, this 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 roof is just fucking me. It's just me over there trying to yeah. talk to you know what I'm saying. So 
I asked them, um, can I, can I, can I leave? They, they didn't want to at first. It took me like a couple years to kind of get off. Yeah. And, um, you were definitely in like contractual limbo yeah. for a while there. I feel like. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, I'm going to just give one example and what I mean by, okay. So when you are independent artist, you can put out music how you want to and do yep. what you want. With, with labels and not saying that this is right or wrong. Labels, you have to have, you got to submit the song you want. You got to give them, you know, shit, three months leeway. Mm -hmm. And they might not even say, they might not even fuck with the song. They might say, uh, let's let's try something else. So it's not like with independent, you can just do it the fuck yeah, you want. Yeah, it's not do. even like, here's what I'm releasing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. here's what I want to release. Yeah, here's and they're what like, I want to release. Okay, yeah, exactly. fine. Or they're like, eh, try again. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So- and 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 with today's market, you just can't. If you're not like a big fucking artist, if you're not, you know, you don't really, you can't do that. You can't play them type of games. And I ain't saying games. You just can't play that. You can't do that. You can't say, uh, shit. I gotta wait three months to put a single or some shit out. You gotta keep the content and shit going. Yeah, yeah I mean, so so since then, you know, that that you know, that's kind of segueing perfectly. You haven't released. A full length project. You've only done the four song yeah. lost songs off of the Mink Coat Killer EP yeah. and, and all singles. All singles. And yeah. fuck tons of them, by the way, which yeah. is awesome. So, like, yes. definitely kudos to the consistency because we talk about this shit all the time. Yeah. Like, we do live in a day and age of the single and the consistently dropping, you know, artist, right? Can we expect a full length project? I want, up? you know, and the reason for dropping those singles is just how the climate change, man. Um, yep. I like that. I love fucking making the album. Yeah. But it's like fucking you make the album and then if you don't have the proper infrastructure to put the shit out, it just they ain't gonna say it falls on deaf ear. But it kind of kind of do. does. It kind of yeah. does. Yeah. So it's much harder to market a full length project. It's much yeah. harder, yeah, exactly. So it's like now it's like instead of like unless the narrative's super strong. You know, like exactly. if, if you really think about like what is the story we're telling with this project and like. And then you bust it, your ass to tell that story. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah, unless some, sh but unless it's, some it's, shit happens. It's basically like. Publicity. I need to go yeah. fucking go shoot viral. Up Target or some yeah. shit. <laughs> Jesus. No, y'all can't just, play. Oh, you can't, yeah, you can't play. I'm, you can beat somebody up and fucking Target and shit go viral. We just lost our monetization yeah. on this video. Yeah. <laughs> We've been canceled <laughs> thanks to Jaron fucking <laughs> Benton. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, so like it's it's just, it's like, just a singles culture, and yeah. you know, and you're just kind of, and that's cool that you've adapted. Because yeah. to be honest, me looking at you, like you were a project guy. Obviously, yeah. you know, you were doing steady projects, like kind of the traditional route, and then you've kind of evolved and like kept up with the times, if you yeah. will, to be in this singles culture that we live in. You exactly. know what I mean? So no, I, it, it I want makes sense. I want to do the project shit, but it's just like. It's gotta be the right situation. Yeah. Exactly. So it, so it's not even on the horizon though, right? Like, I I haven't. No, it's I just haven't. not. Yeah. yeah. I've been lying because people would be like, "Yo, what are you doing?" I was like, "Yo, this year, I'm some shit out. I got a project." He's been saying this year for five <laughs> yeah. years. <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, no, no project to be honest with you. I do love how he's actually kept it a buck with us. Like he, he hasn't <laughs> fucked sure. with us much this yet. But yeah, no, 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 but no, no. but we are about to fuck with you, Henry. Let's go. Let's go. Uh -oh. We have entered a final segment of the One More Time podcast, Jaron. I'm excited to see this this part with him. Jaron, this is the Rapid Fire Rampage. Let's go. It's I love these sound effects. They're great, right? Do you know where this one's from? Rampage! It sounds like Michael Rappaport. It's from Archer. You ever <laughs> see Archer? Oh, that's oh, a no, funny I, one. I never watched Archer. <laughs> put my put my me fucking Archer. cousin loves Archer. That's really good. I never watched it. So it's a three-part Rampage. Right. I'm going to hit you with some short answer questions. Okay. We're going to do some this or that, and then we're going to do a word association. I'll break it down as we go. Are you buckled up? Ready for this? This, this is a pretty intense buckle the fuck up. final portion. Okay, here we go. Episode 48 of the One More Time Podcast with Jaron Benton. Rapid Fire Rampage. Rampage! What is the Jaron Benton motto or catchphrase? Jaron Benton. <laughs> Simple enough. I like there you it. go. What can average rappers do to rap better? Ooh. It, shit that's irritating like uh <laughs> listen to a bunch of i ain't gonna say shit is irritating you got to put a lot of work in yeah. if you want to be a better rapper study good rappers mm. that's my best advice study good rappers and um when you study them you know 
you're probably going to start off Im- imitating them at first. Yes. But then you'll find your own fucking lane the more yes. you keep doing it. So I, it's just practice. I'll say practice and study the best. Yes. That's what I say. It's a fantastic answer. Oh, yeah. What is your favorite hobby outside of music? Ooh. What do you do? Uh, Just hanging with my kids one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, fuck For it. For sure. Yeah. Just kicking it with my kids. Good dad gang. Yeah. Good dad gang, yeah. For sure, man. Yeah. If you were a professional wrestler, what would be your signature finishing move? Ooh. <laughs> I take it back to like when niggas used to snap niggas' necks in the fucking 80s movies. You know how you just like... <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. God. So that's mine. That's a good one. All right. how, how, you, don't, you don't see neck snapping no more. No, no, no you, you don't. don't. Hell no. So nope. I'm bringing back neck snapping. I feel like it'd be hard to fake. Sorry to all the people that think wrestling you is real. Mean, still. They're, they're fucking fake it in the movies. <laughs> yeah, we're just so fucking yeah. sensitive these days, man. Yeah. There's no neck sta- no neck yeah. snapping anymore. No neck snapping. It's terrible. Yeah, it's it's terrible. a terrible time we live in. <laughs> it is. You can choose anyone alive or dead to executive produce your next album. Okay. Who is it? Trent Reznor. Who? This guy is in his his rock, rock bag. bag. Yeah. Okay. Big time. What is one job you could not be paid enough to do? Um, jerk off dudes. <laughs> uh, we're fucking canceled, man. This is those anti, those homophobic motherfuckers. No, I'm not saying if you jerk off dudes. I'm just kidding. You jerk off dudes. It's just not for him. It's just not for me, yeah. That's yeah, fair. You wake up as a deer. Okay. What is the first thing you do? Watch my back because I'm a fucking, I'm prey. Indeed. Yeah, smart. Look around. Hell yeah. You wake up as God. Okay. What is the first thing you do? Hmm. I'm ending life suffering, but still keeping understanding because it's like, this is going to sound too philosophical. No, we're here for okay, it. Listen. I'm ready. So, like whatever this simulation is, it's goofy as fuck. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> so I say that to say if I was the architect of a simulation, I would end suffering. I would let everyone live. I would end suffering, but not just suffering. I would also have an extreme level of respect and love for others. But I would also keep an understanding, even though it doesn't, even though being disrespectful and, and, and violence and all that crazy shit doesn't exist in this world. You don't know it's bad or good until you go through it. So I'm still going to keep the understanding of knowing what it is, mm. but it just will not be allowed in my world. There's nothing but... So knowing that you're being good for a purpose because the opposite is bad. Yes, you have to know that. But you're but, always good. But you're not going to experience yeah, it. Yeah, okay. That's what I'm trying to say. I like yeah, it. Okay. I get it. Yeah. Damn, I'm see, with you. he's asked this, this a good. few times... And that's the, the other, best answer. That's, the, that's hands down the best answer yeah. we've got. Jace, other people Jace said doing, he wanted to get rid of peas out of all fried rice. That's what he oh, would wow. do. That's what he would do with, <laughs> with his godly powers. I was like, you are a selfish prick, bro. I mean, he said he would do other things, but the, he would start there. The peas aren't even that bad. They're not. They're not that bad. Nah. Straight. Jaren, <laughs> Jaren if you were a chicken wing flavor, what, okay. would, you, what would you be? Which one? What are you going with? Here? I would be hot, but I would be, but the I, if I was the flavor, I would be hot, but I would only be on extra crispy wings. Mm. Yeah. My wife would love you, man. <laughs> I, I don't like soggy. My wings yeah. are crispy. She, yeah. We order wings. Yeah. She preheats the oven before we go pick them up so that she can fry the fuck out of them more. Genius. Like, she's a real G. Shout like, out Lana. Yeah. Shout, shout out Lana. Your wife, man. Yeah, for real. Because she's the same way. Like, we ask for es- extra crispy from the restaurant. Still not crispy enough. It's not. No it's restaurant has sauce. ever. No, I mean, whatever. It's, it's just harder just, to do that. I don't know. I no, mean, I think you can't. No, it's not the hot sauce. Oh, that's another thing. I wouldn't. I wouldn't overdo it with myself neither. Like I wouldn't just you be, wouldn't be salt, too hot. Be, no, no, I'd be hot. But I'm saying, I, as far you know, ever get wings and it's just like, damn, there's so much sauce on this shit. Yeah, man. yeah. It'd be it's just your perfect sauce. sauce. And, his, and, and the chicken wings got to be crisp. Yeah. Like, okay. okay. Yeah. These I answers are great so yeah. far. Yeah. Perfect. Jaren, is a hot dog a sandwich? No. How many raccoons would fit in an ice cream truck? And that's like from top, you're stacking on top Stack of each other too? Mm-hmm. You can mush them in. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say... But fully grown. Fully grown raccoons. Standard size ice cream truck. I'm going to say maybe 1,500. About 1,500. Okay. Raccoons. I like it. 
You're cramming them in, but I think yeah, that's a good yeah, answer. Yeah, they're getting crammed <laughs> the fuck in. Jaren, what is your favorite curse word? Fuck. Part one of the rampage. Part one. Moving on to the this or that. I'm going to give you two choices. You just pick the one that gravitates towards you the Let's most. Go. Part two of the rampage. Rampage! Writing or freestyling? Uh, writing. Streaming money or show money? Ooh, uh, show money. Hooks or verses? Um, I'm a verse type of guy. Home studio or commercial studio? I like the commercial studio. When you say home studio, you mean just in my personal home or just anyone's any- home? I just like being outside of my fucking house. So either one, as long okay. as it's not in <laughs> not my your house. home. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, not Jaron Benton's house studio. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. there you go. Yeah. Okay. Karens or Chads? What are Chads? <laughs> I think it's I'm like a, a, a new thing. I think it's like a guy, Karen. Ooh, it's like a bro. I didn't know that. Poor Chad Tennies. Sorry, Chad. I'm gonna choose the Chad over the Karen. No one likes a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Chainsaws or machetes? I'm gonna go with a uh, machete. Sweet tea or lemonade? Lemonade. Silly hats or silly socks? Silly hats. Live the rest of your life with one giant hand or one giant ear? I'm going to go with the giant hand. Giant hand? Hell yeah. You could do some stuff with that. Yeah, you can. A giant Smack the ear, shit that out of everyone, someone. <laughs> everybody is so... I got small ass ears, but every... Look at me. So maybe ears. you could... Those are tiny little things. Yeah. So check this out. With big ass ears, everyone is going to be able to look at your nasty ass earwax. Mm. If you got a little hair in them, they go see... It's just... It's, He's really it's, thinking it's, this through. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's too much. Smart answer. It's good so reason. I'm going to go with the big ass hand. Big hand. Yeah. And plus that's just... Uh, let me get y'all canceled. <laughs> It's just a little bit more smackdown. It's a weapon. Do all my kids' moms. I'm bullshitting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bullshitting. God, domestic abuse <laughs> jokes. We'll, uh, we'll cut that out. Pet Will mo- we? <laughs> no. <laughs> pet moose or pet hedgehog? Pet moose. Huffing or freebasing? Freebasing. A 75% chance of a platinum album or a 25% chance of a diamond album? 75% of platinum. He's not, uh, he's, he's, he's keeping it low risk. He's oh. going for the bag. Part two of the rampage. Part two. Let's go. Minus canceling us. Yeah. He's, he's doing good. But that was good Let's content. Go. So that was good. All around a good section. It's all going to boil down to this final section. All this right. is the word association. Let's do it. I'm going to give you one word. Just first thing off the top of your head. Just whatever. Spit one word back right back at me. Okay. Here we go. Rampage! Microphone. Fiend. Jealousy. Uh, ooh. My kid's mom. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked a lot about your kid's mom on today's episode. That's, I got two of them, so okay. Which I never one? Dis, I never say which one it is. That's it's genius. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. it's all They're every, always yeah. yeah. They call, and they're calling never, each other like you. Think you're talking about you? <laughs> it's never either one. Never That's know. the beauty of it. It's yeah. like not actually either yeah. one. Or is it both? But the jealousy goes both ways, too. Yeah. I, I can be jealous, too. Sure, sure. We all can. Yeah. Gucci. Played out. I mean, it's over, over, it's too, just over. The now. designer, not the artist. Oh, we're talking about, oh. Okay. I don't know. It's just, you got to you interpret about, this as Oh, I'm you. talking about the clothing. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Alarm. Uh, gift and a curse. Mm. Haircut. Jealousy. <laughs> Bring it back to that. Elon Musk. Uh, two things come to mind. Okay. Genius and weirdo. That's exactly what he is. Billboard. <laughs> billboard. Uh, it reminds me that I need to get my fucking billboard plaques mm. that I've yet not fucking paid for. We talked about this on uh, the last episode, actually. They're like $1,000 kind of or something. Yeah, they are. They're, one. The, like the average <laughs> Joe out there that's not in the industry yeah. probably thinks they're free. Cause, they're not free. Because yeah, <laughs> no. I definitely did until yeah. I got into music. And yeah, I was like, I, oh, yeah, well. Yeah, I didn't know that neither. It, it, yeah. Even with um, plaques, all this shit you got to pay for. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything. Yep. That's crazy. Asparagus. It's okay. <laughs> Harvard. Um, I turned them down. <laughs> Great move. Cheater. Uh, that's definitely me. 
It used to be me. <laughs> hence, used to be. Hence yeah. the ex wife yeah. and yeah. the yeah. other ex. It used yeah. to be me. Good call. Yeah. Old Jaren. Old Jaren. Shadow. Van. Ocean. Meditation. Mm-hmm. Bitcoin. Uh, I fucked up. By not I'm, getting it. No, by getting it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 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 gotta hold it a little longer. Not Bitcoin. Man. I take. Oh, you said Bitcoin. I was just yeah. thinking cryptocurrency in general. I fucked. You up bought some shit coins. I bought Doge. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. That was a so mistake. Bitcoin also makes me feel like stressed out. A fuck up too because <laughs> my home. You know, y'all know Flick. Uh, he used to be around. Nah, I don't think so. Flick back in the day used to tell me this was back when I was on Funk Volume to invest in Bitcoin. Mm. Um, Drop my buddy's bag. a Bitcoin millionaire. Yeah, and I, 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 like, I don't, I didn't. He used to, I swear to God, this was the one. He's like, man, I'll tell you something you could do, man. Just, just like this. He was trying to explain that shit to me. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. Yeah. And yeah. then, oh, I had no idea what the fuck my friend. I was like, dude, you're high. Like, I was like, what are you talking about? Like, because it, it was basically much like when the internet was first coming out, and everyone yeah. was like, nobody knew it. Yeah. Fuck that internet yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, what? Is, that's this, not gonna. This be is what anything. people use no to buy idea. drugs. Had, yeah. He he would even tell me shit like he's like, man, I'm telling you, it's not even that big of a deal. Just. Put like three thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah, and if you would have, would have be, been a hundred grand by now, easy. At least, yeah. yeah. Moving on, Lil. Oversaturated. <laughs> There's a lot. A little oversaturated. Yeah. There's a lot yeah, of Lil's <laughs> fucking saturated. A lot of Lil's. Studio. Um. Music. Magic City. Um. Strippers. Pistol. Uh, I need to get a new one. <laughs> Bully. Me. What a rampage. What a rampage. Really solid. Solid rampage, for sure. Yeah. What's been the worst one? Uh, last episode. Yeah. Sorry, Verse, <laughs> but pretty bad. last episode. <laughs> oh, Verse? In, in the uh, uh, this or that. Was Verse here? He's, a, Verse? he's a manager. Um, Do you know okay, Verse? No, I'm thinking of Verse Simmons. Yeah, not oh, Verse no. Simmons. Okay, okay. No, yeah. no, no. Ryan Burgess is his is uh, real name, but okay. yeah, he goes by Verse. He manages Chi Chi, the producer, like... Like a little baby's producer, and yeah. he's got a bunch of you know Grammy nominated records. The this or that? He basically just said both. He just said both oh, for every all of single them. one. And we were like, it's bro, like it's literally chance. it's literally called this or, or that. that. You're yeah. supposed to choose one. Not this and so, that. But anyway, we love you, verse. Yeah, amazing conversation, man. It's been I mean, awesome. It's been dope, man. Such, I, I had a good time here. Yeah, good. we we appreciate you coming on. Such a dope story. You know the fact that you and Henry have gotten to work together, and then we got to have you on Shout the show out to is fucking ace. You know what's crazy, yes, sir. Um, I yeah, got we didn't talk about that at all. H three fucking uh, drum kits, and I never knew it was one time I was here. I think I was with you. I was, I was like, "Oh fuck!" I just thought that was just some. Fucking- oh, this guy posts stories of him making beats on uh, on, on story, yeah, and like H- it's like H three hat, H yeah. three snare, H three kick. I'm yeah, like, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah. Shout I'm out glad it's shout out. glad it's getting used. Hell yeah! And I remember I was here, and he was like, you know, H three. I was like, oh shit! And it makes sense. Cause that's why it says H three. Yeah, I was like, oh yeah. I didn't put none of it together. He just put the yeah. tag together. I thought that his, was some shit that head. was in the fucking shit. The logic, but it was some Patron. Shout out Patron who gave me the shit. Yep. Yeah. I, I, so I Patron's used, giving out your drum kicks. Yeah, and he I, didn't I, tell I me used, he was I doing used, that. I use. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay with it, but a lot of the H3. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I really use a lot of your hats and uh, yes, a lot of shit like that. That's yeah. dope. Man. Good stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Honestly, amazing run so far, and you, you know you're not stopping. It sounds like anytime no, soon. No, we ain't so. stopping, man. I'm about to get into this acting shit. Hold okay. On, manifesting that. I okay. just manifested that. Let's do it. Manifest. Yeah. I'm about to. I'm about Jaren to get to will acting. win an Oscar. That'd be crazy. Yeah, I will. You know, I will. Yeah. I, will. I, I think you will. will. I think you already did. Actually, yeah, I will. We're I just will. watching it happen yeah. now. Yeah. You already did. Yeah. Shut. Yeah. Shut up. I'm getting into the acting shit now. Yeah. That's dope. Man. I think you'd be great with that. Well, amazing career so far. Thank you, Such man. great stories. So much fun on the on the episode today, man. Really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, all, man. Henry. Until next week, what are we doing? Getting the fuck out of here. We're getting out of here. Getting the fuck out of here. Peace. Pop that shit like one more time. Pop that one more time. Pop that shit like one more time. Pop that one more time.